Hi, we're still in section one and in this lecture I'd like to talk a little bit about the various parts that you need in order to go through this course. And by parts I mean things like resistors, capacitors and the like. In the previous lecture we talked about the tools and in the one after this one we'll talk about software. As far as parts are concerned, uh, nothing fancy here. Again, this is a course in which an Arduino maker uh, will be able to get uh, basic knowledge about the components that are plugged and used in order to support the various functionality that you have implemented on your Arduino. And those components tend to be relatively simple. So let's go and have a look at them now. This box uh, pretty much contains everything that you will need. So let's have a look. I'll start from the right and go towards the left. We've got a few diodes here. So for example, this one here is a Zener diode. We'll be talking about diodes uh, quite extensively. Uh, this one is just a, a common rectifier diode, nothing fancy. These are the kind of diodes that Arduino makers tend to use a lot. So you need to have a few of them lying around. Then we've got capacitors. So capacitors like these, electrolytic capacitors, are very common as well, used for things such as the, um, energy stores for motors or to smooth out voltage for a power supply and also ceramic capacitors like this one here are very common. So uh, you can just uh, be perfectly fine and not need anything else by having a bunch of ceramic and electrolytic capacitors. Um, I'll show you something else that I've got here. For example, this is uh, my, my full, uh, one of my boxes full of capacitors. And when you buy them, they come in little bags like this. So they are rated. I'll be talking about what these numbers mean in the lecture on the capacitors and how to read the capacitance of a capacitor printed on the package. Got, got my electrolytic ones. You can see that those are rated and the capacitance is written on the package. It's somewhere here. There we go. 470 microfarads. And um, this, uh, this is an example of a, an SMD, a surface mounted capacitor, aluminium, it's still an electrolytic capacitor. It just comes in a different package and you can uh, stick it onto the surface of a PCB and a lot more of these kinds. But you don't need all of that, really you just need a, a few electrolytic and a few ceramic capacitors. Then you need resistors and a uh, couple of examples here. So these are resistors. Um, no need again to worry about uh, the tolerance of the resistors. Uh, they can go from say 1% to 10% and the prices vary accordingly, but whichever resistors you've got available, uh, they would do just fine for this course. Now, when you buy resistors, and they're brand new before you dig into them. <laughs> they come nicely packaged like this. And typically they give you some indication of the value of the resistor. Although we're going to learn about how to measure the value independently. But for example, we can see that this one here is a 200 ohm resistor. We're only going to need a few values here. So we're going to need uh, say 200 ohms, 1000, 10,000 and maybe up to to uh, 20,000 kilo ohm resistors and uh, not that many of them either. So I have a few resistors. Then LEDs, we'll be doing a lot of uh, illumination, illumination with our LEDs. I've got, uh, I really like these larger ones. So I think this has a diameter of 10 millimeters. I'm gonna put the information on the lecture notes for the LEDs, but if you don't have these handy, no problem at all. Just go with a classic five millimeter LED and you can go for different colors as well. It's no problem. Uh, I also have, I just happen to have an RGB LED in my 
box here. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be using it, we'll see. I might use it uh, later, but uh, if you don't have an RGB LED, no problem at all, it's not necessary. So that's LEDs, and you know, LEDs are cheap. You can buy a whole bunch of them on eBay for very little money, and they come in different shapes and sizes. This one, for example, is a high-powered LED. It's a kind of LED that uh, you might see used in a car, in automotive. A lot of power can come through this. Don't look at it directly, <laughs> it can go blind. Um, so another LED is just a different package. Green LED. Um, I think at least one of the LEDs in here is also transmitting in the infrared uh, light spectrum. Um, might be this one here. So you can use such LEDs for remote controls, for example. Okay, so bottom line, have a bunch of LEDs available. You don't need more than, say, five. Next, we are going to need transistors. So here's a couple of examples of transistors. Uh, so this one here is a Darlington transistor. It's a TIP122. It's a transistor that allows us to uh, provide, say, a bit more power in whichever circuit that we are driving, as opposed to a more general purpose transistor uh, like this uh, 2N2222 transistor. So I, I would recommend that you have at least one of each. So have a one, uh, one of TIP122 or 121, the difference is in the ratings, and a classic 2N2222. Uh, most of our work will be done with one particular kind of transistor, the um, uh, NPN transistor instead of PNP. If you happen to have PNP transistors, just do whatever I show in the circuits, but in reverse. <laughs> I'll explain in the lecture on transistors better. Okay, so have the transistors available. Uh, I've got a section on voltage regulators because voltage regulation is one of the common things that a Arduino maker will want to do with whatever the building it's quite common so I'll be showing you how to use uh, a variety of voltage regulators this one here is a classic again L7805CV so it can provide me with a 5 volt output uh, these also come in smaller packages so and see, just <laughs> notice how the package between the voltage regulator and the tip transistor is identical. Okay, so don't be confused. Look at what's on the outside, what's printed on the package, so that you know what you're holding. So this is a semiconductor power supply. Okay, so I have a few of those. And then we need some auxiliary items. For example, we need buttons for the breadboard and potentiometers. We're talking about voltage dividers, so uh, one of these potentiometers is gonna be very useful in that lecture. And that's all the parts that you need in order to go through all of the demos and exercises that I talk about in this course. Let's move on to the next lecture now where we'll talk about software.